that actually is a good segue to the rule two about tax incidents. Rule two about tax incidents. Rule two is the side of the market on which the tax is imposed is irrelevant. The side of the market on which the tax is imposed is irrelevant. It doesn't matter who pays the tax to the government. You get the same outcome. This is really exciting. Okay? So let's now look at figure 3.5. Figure 3.5 is the same 50 cent tax, but now it's levied on consumers. So now what we do is when you go to the gas station and you buy a gallon of gas, it's hard to think how this would work, but imagine something where you stick your credit card to buy a gallon of gas. For every gallon you buy, an extra 50 cents gets charged to your credit card. Okay, just think of it that way. Literally, you are bearing the taxes, the consumer. It's not the way gas tax usually work, but let's bear with me. Okay, so every gallon you buy, you pay an extra 50 cents. Okay, well then you might think, so if I said to you, you know what, as president, I am going to change the tax. No longer will the gas station pay the 50 cents. You'll pay the 50 cents. Can you imagine the reaction? People be up in arms. That's crazy. You, the gas station should pay. Now I have to pay. That's an unbelievably unfair thing to do. And I would say, well, you obviously haven't taken 1401. Because if you look at figure 3.5, we can see that is an unfair thing to do. In fact, it has no effect at all. Why is that? Well, let's think about what the market happens when I levy this tax on consumers. Now, consumers say, gee, I used to be willing to buy 100 billion gallons at $1.50. But now, I'm only willing to pay a dollar for 100 billion gallons because I have to pay 50 cents to the government for every gallon I buy. My demand curve is going to shift inward. Okay, I'm going to want less gas. It's going to shift inward by 50 cents. Now, producers are going to say, whoa, if you want less gas, I'm going to have to cut the price. So that I, if, if demand drops, I'm going to cut the price. I'm going to reach a new equilibrium at point D with a market price of $1.30 and 90 billion gallons being sold. Point one to notice is you flip back to figure 3-4. Okay, point one to notice is that that's the same quantity. Either way, if you love the tax on producers or consumers, either way you sell 90 billion gallons. Point two to notice, we do the math, is the burdens are the same. What's the burden on consumers? Here, let's put this down here again. What's the burden on consumers? Well, it's the post-tax price, which is $1.30, minus the pre-tax price, which is $1.50, so that's negative 20 cents, plus the check they send to the government, or the credit charge charge they get, which is 50 cents. Minus 20 plus 50 is 30 cents. Exactly the same burden as last time. What's the burden on producers? Well, they, their pre-tax price was $1.50. Okay? Their post-tax price okay, is $1.30. So they bear a 20 cent burden. Okay? They bear a 20 cent burden just like they did before. Nothing has changed. Even though we've completely changed who's sending the money to the government, the market reaction has left us in the exact same place. I, regardless of who pays the tax, the, the consumer bears 30 cents and the producer bears 20 cents. And it doesn't matter who sends the check into the government. And that's because the naive way of thinking about this ignores the fact that markets react. And that's a fundamental lesson in this class. You'll read news stories and they'll say, well, this will do this. And what I want you to be able to say is, wait a second, that ignores how the market's going to react. That ignores the fact that this change will be offset by market reactions. Okay? Questions about that?